mechanical layout section, it defaults to user defined in our one axis tracker type. I've already chosen a module. And now let's talk about our tracker design. If you click info, you can see a diagram that describes the different values that you need to enter. Both row quantity and tracker length are modules in that direction, so how many modules long and how many modules tall we want our tracker to be. Stickouts, motor gaps, pier gaps, our row and column gaps are all distances that you can specify in the window. So here I've specified a one module tall tracker, 60 modules long, with half an inch gap in between. Uh, they're all in portrait. I've entered 11 piers, but there aren't any pier gaps, motor gaps, or stickouts on the ends. Now for our installation areas, the tilt angle of the rotational axis of our tracker is always going to default to zero, but you can specify a tilt angle for that. Um, for our installation areas, you can specify the distances between your trackers, like a walkway, and how many trackers tall, and how many trackers wide. You can also specify an exact column spacing or enter in a GCR to get the correct spacing. So I've specified an installation area of two trackers tall, 25 wide with a three foot gap in between each tracker, north-south, as well as a GCR of 0.4 east-west. In the next video, we'll look at defining our equipment pads as well as the roads in between our installation area. Later.